Hi, today's problem is assuming incomplete dominance for both genes, what is the phenotypic ratio of the offspring of the cross of the two parents who is going to be heterozygous for both genes? And uh, if you feel that you know how to solve this problem, I encourage you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own, and uh, later you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. And uh, before I will uh, give you the answer and I will show how to do it, I want to explain what is the incomplete dominance means. And uh, imagine that we have a situation when we have one parent who is going to be uh, capital A, capital A, and another one who is going to be small a, small a, for some particular trait, uh, for example, for the color. So color of this parent would be red, and uh, color of the flowers of this parent would be white. And when we cross these two parents, uh, we are going to have all the offspring, that is going to be capital A, small a, capital A, small a, capital A, small a, and capital A, small a. So uh, all the um, offspring going to be homogeneous, and uh, homogeneous uh, and heterozygous, and all of them going to be of the same color, but the color would be different from the parents. So this is going to be intermediate color. For example, uh, it can be pink. So capital A would be incompletely dominant over the small a. And uh, offspring uh, is not going to be the same color as parent uh, on the top, but going to be some intermediate color between red and white. So this is what uh, incomplete dominance means, and uh, I want to show you another example. For example, if we take this parent that is uh, capital A, small a, and if we cross with another parent that is going to be capital A, small a, and of course, as you see from the previous example, uh, such two parents going to be pink or the flowers going to be pink and what we are going to get from such cross uh, here would we would have capital A capital A capital A small a here and capital A small a here and small a small a here and as you see uh, one quarter would be red one quarter would be white and two out of four would be uh, pink color, just like their parents. So this is uh, incomplete dominance, and now I can proceed uh, with showing how to solve this problem and what phenotypic ratio we are going to get. But before that I have to clean uh, space here. So if we have uh, one parent that is going to be heterozygous for the both genes, what uh, kind of gametes such a parent may produce and uh, here how we uh, solve this problem so this is the first uh, pair so this parent may be have um, capital A capital B gamet uh, another variant it can be capital A and small b Yet another variant can be small a, capital B, and the last variant would be small a and small b. And as long as we have both parents that is uh, heterozygous for the same, same alleles, uh, for the same genes, so on the other side here we would write the same uh, gamut, so this is going to be capital A capital B here, capital A, small b here, small a, capital B here, and small a, small b here. Just uh, the same gametes as we got here on the top, 
we are going to get here on the side because we cross two parents with the same uh, uh, genotype. So now we build a Punnett square and we are going to get 16 cells but of course this doesn't mean that we are going to get 16 different genotypes some of them can be repetitive so let's see what the genotypes we can get from such a cross and uh, in this first cell as you see uh, here we have uh, one parent who has uh, capital A and this parent also has capital A so we put capital A capital A for the first uh, set of allele here and the second uh, couple of alleles we would have capital B here and capital B here so that means that we put capital B here and capital B here and uh, next we have capital A for the this parent and capital A for this parent so once again capital A capital A and we have uh, capital B here and small b here so we put capital B and small b here so as you see uh, these two genotypes are different and let's move to the next cell and here we would have uh, capital A and small a and capital B capital B next cell we would have capital A small a and capital B small b here we would have capital A capital A and capital B small b capital A capital A small b small b capital A small a capital B small b and here we would have capital A small a and uh, small b small b here we would have capital A small a capital B capital B capital A small a capital B small b and small a small a here and capital B capital B small a small a here and capital B small b here we almost done capital A small a here and capital B small b here capital A small a here and small b small b here capital uh, sorry sm small a small a here and capital B small b here and last cell we would have small a small a here and small b small b and let's now uh, think about what kind of different um, uh, genotypes and phenotypes we may have and we have only one genotype that is small a small b uh, small a small a small b small b and this is this one uh, you can take a look uh, we don't have such uh, genotype anywhere else and uh, so we can put uh, ratio here would be uh, one so let's uh, think about what other genotypes we may have here so for example small a small a and capital B small b we also have this genotype here so uh, this is going to be our second ratio and third genotype would be for example let's consider this uh, capital A small a and small b small b and um, for example I would use pink color here so we would have also here the same genotype and 
it seems that we don't have such genotype uh, anymore. So we have only two. So this is also going to be two. And uh, you may also ask uh, why not this, um, some of these genotypes uh, would be the same like this one. Because as you remember, uh, here we have incomplete dominance. So, for example, when we have genotypes that is capital A, capital A, and capital B, small b, uh, this is going to be not the same as this one, like uh, we would have if this is going to be simple dominance. So this capital A small a would be the same as capital A capital A. But as you remember in my previous example, this would be for example if this trait would be color, so this would be red and this would be pink. And this small a small a would be uh, white. So here uh, capital A capital A and capital A small a would mean different phenotype. So let's uh, move next. What uh, other phenotypes we may have here? And we also have here small a capital B capital B. And let's look closely if we have such a phenotype also. We don't have any more small a small a phenotype. So we have to put one here. And let's move for the other phenotype to search for the other phenotype. And this would be the next phenotype. Uh, capital A small a and capital B small b. And we would have four such phenotypes. And phenotype here would mean uh, genotype. So uh, we have to put four here. And once again, let me change the color. And let's look for the other um, phenotypes and genotypes. For example, capital A, small a, and capital B capital B. Do we have such a um, phenotype and genotype? Yes. So now it's much easier because we are left uh, with few cells and uh, our search for the phenotypes and the same uh, genotypes would be easier. So we put two here and uh, what we left with is uh, to uh, one genotype here would equal to this genotype here. So we put two. And uh, we also have uh, one genotype here. And this also means one phenotype capital A, capital A, and small b, small b. So once again we put one. And uh, the last one, of course, also would be unique. Uh, we would have here capital A, capital A, and uh, capital B, capital B. This is going to be only one such uh, phenotype and genotype. So let's now count uh, how many different phenotypes we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's uh, clear, clearly uh, that uh, this is uh, uh, only answer A. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's count how many phenotypes that is unique, only one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. How many phenotypes that repeated twice? One, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. And we have only one phenotype that repeated four times. Uh, so uh, our answer would be answer A. And uh, if you're still confused, I only can recommend you to review this video once again. And um, just want to remind you if this uh, would be complete dominance, the correct answer would be C. So this is, would be phenotypic ratio if we would have a simple dominance. But as long as we have incomplete dominance, the correct answer would be A. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.